In proclaiming the emergency measures act, the Liberal government cited security threats. I quote, threats of violence and the presence of firearms during demonstrations constitute a state of emergency. Mr Speaker, these are serious allegations which have caused a great deal of public fear. What information did the Prime Minister detain at that time that confirmed the existence of a risk of such magnitude to the country? Mr Speaker, how many Canadians have been arrested for organising sedition against the Government of Canada? There was a lot of proof of disturbances on the economy, at our borders. Many Canadians lost their jobs temporarily during the protests, and that is one of the reasons for which we had to invoke the Emergency Measures Act. And now it is time to start our transparency exercise, and the government will cooperate with the Commissioner. Mr. Speaker, I'll ask the Minister of Public Safety the same question I asked yesterday, a question that he suspiciously avoided answering. Did any minister or members of their political staff speak with Justice Rouleau before his appointment as Commissioner on the Inquiry into the Emergencies Act? Did they discuss what kind of evidence the inquiry would or would not seek, including documents covered under Cabinet Confidence or Solicitor-Client Privilege? The Honourable Minister of Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, I can assure my honourable colleague um, that uh, the government is fully committed to being transparent around the events and circumstances that led to the invocation of the Emergencies Act. Last week, we launched the public inquiry, affording Justice Rouleau um, broad powers to compel witnesses, to compel uh, documents and information, including some classified information, should he so choose to ask for it. Our intention is to shine a light on those events, and it would be uh, certainly, I think, a point of departure to hear the Conservatives recognize that there was an emergency, uh, we fulfilled our responsibility to protect Canadians, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Surgeon River Parkland. Mr. Speaker, he's avoiding the question again, but I'll move on. This past weekend, Ottawa saw the so-called rolling thunder protests come and go without major incident. Now, during the Freedom Convoy protests, the government claimed that they needed the Emergencies Act because they needed to compel tow truck drivers to remove the protesters. Now, over this last weekend, we saw many vehicles towed without needing the Emergencies Act. Yet another blow to this government's fabricated claims. If the government didn't need extraordinary powers to get the tow trucks, what did they need them for? Of course, there are big distinctions between what occurred last weekend and what occurred uh, last uh, winter, which was a national emergency, Mr. Speaker. We invoked the Emergencies Act after we received advice from law enforcement. Uh, once it was invoked, we were able to restore our public safety, and now we'll ensure that there's transparency in the accountability of that decision. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Kildonan St. Paul. Uh, Mr. Speaker, yesterday the Minister claimed the Liberals invoked the Emergencies Act because they needed it, and yet again there was a large protest related to the winter one that he just referred to this past weekend, but as far as I'm aware, no one remains camped out on the roadways around Parliament, which is in direct contradiction to what the Minister is claiming, because as this past weekend showed, with leadership and coordination between government and police, peace and order can be maintained. Mr. Mr. Speaker, there was clearly a failure by these Liberals to show leadership during the winter protests, as the Minister refers to it, and they used the Emergencies Act to bail themselves out. Isn't that right, Mr. Speaker? The Honourable Minister of Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, I would uh, point out that um, notwithstanding the fact that public safety was maintained, that there were enforcement actions taken uh, last week as a result of some individuals who, again, uh, crossed the line and broke the law. And it would be, again, uh, an opportunity for the Conservatives to recognize, finally, after uh, now months of denying that there was an emergency, because collectively we have an, a responsibility and a burden as parliamentarians to uphold the law. That's exactly what we did when we invoked the Emergencies Act, and now we'll ensure there's transparency so that all Canadians can be reaffirmed in that decision. Thank you. MPs continued to work from right here in Parliament throughout the winter protest. In fact, I would walk across Wellington Street at least once a day with my infant son in a stroller to come to work. If the threat was as serious as this government is now making it out to be, did the Minister of Public Safety knowingly put the lives of myself my infant son and every single person that works here in danger. The Honourable Minister of Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, uh, first and foremost, uh, 
I'm, I'm very relieved that uh, my colleague was able to access uh, the Hill with the additional protection and safety that was offered by the RCMP, by the Parliamentary Protection Service, uh, by the Sergeant at Arms. But there's a big difference between what some of us were able to experience on this Hill and what was going on off of this Hill, Mr. Speaker. And there can be no doubt that people who lived in Ottawa uh, were uh, completely had their lives mm -hmm. upended by the illegal occupation here, that people who lived in border communities had their lives upended, and that was because individuals broke the law to a point of a national emergency. That's why we evoked the Emergencies Act. We did it to protect Canadians, Mr. Speaker.